Excellency, Ambassador in the Rock, Secretary General of the Caribbean Community, other members of the CARICOM Secretariat who gathered here this morning as part of the ceremony, my colleague, Miss <laughs> Sonia Body, Foreign Affairs Officer, Foreign Service Officer in the Federation's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, members of the media are here, ladies and gentlemen. Just to say, I've singled out this body, and I'm proud that she can witness this notable <coughs> ceremony. This young lady has recently completed her term as a proud CARICOM Youth Ambassador for St. Kitts and ne Nevis. So, ladies and gentlemen, Amb um, Ambassador Rock, good morning. <laughs> I'm honored and do consider it a privilege to have been appointed plenipotentiary representative of St. Christopher and Nevis to the Caribbean community. And in your presence, I have just presented a letter accrediting me to this prestigious organization. Let me express my appreciation for a warm welcome, which has been extended to my delegation since our arrival in Georgetown. I must say that over 20 years ago, I visited the Secretariat regularly to attend Caribbean community meetings at the former headquarters of the Secretariat. Today marks my first visit to these excellent facilities which now house the Secretariat. So let me also express my appreciation for the genuine warmth of the welcome which we received on arrival at these salubrious environments. Ambassador Leroc, the elections of February 16th this year in St. Kitts and Nevis have resulted in a change of government. Why should this be of significance for our region? I say this morning, it took the coming together of three political parties, the People's Action Movement, the People's Labour Party, and the Concerned Citizens Movement, some two years before the announced date of elections in a grouping called Team Unity to fulfill the wishes of our people for a government of national unity. We came together with a simple, powerful slogan, Better Together. Three political parties with obvious different philosophies, which responded to the cry of our people that we need to come together to bring harmony and unity to our land in the face of discrimination and victimization. The genius of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis could and should be the catalyst that causes our CARICOM brothers and sisters to recognize that the integration movement will prosper if we understand that the sum of the parts working together is more powerful than each part working individually. It's Psalm 133 which reminds us in verse 1 how good and pleasant it is when brothers, and may I add, take the liberty to add, and sisters live together in unity. So this morning as I begin this journey with you, for us in St. Kitts and Nevis, it signals a fresh start in our relations with the Caribbean community. That's our promise to you. Our record is clear, as in just seven months, we in Team Unity have delivered meaningful relief to our citizens. Promises made, promises delivered. Team Unity, as I said, has been in government for a mere seven months. This morning I seize the opportunity to assure your Secretary General of the unwavering support and the commitment of our Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris, and Foreign Affairs Minister, the Honorable Mark Brantley, in fostering a new era of solidarity with our Caribbean brothers and sisters. We subscribe to the idea that we'll all achieve more when we work together. In St. Kitts and Nevis, you'll find a solid partner. Mr. Secretary General, the voices of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis will echo throughout the halls of this Secretariat and in the halls of our governments everywhere so that if we are to achieve the quality of life that we seek, then we have to come together as a united team. From the Bahamas in the north to Guyana in the south, we must suppress egoism and embrace unity for the greater good. As the mission statement of the community so aptly states, to provide dynamic leadership and service 
in partnership with community institutions and groups toward the attainment of a viable, internationally competitive and sustainable community with improved quality of life for all. We can only achieve this by recognizing the need for statesmanship where we each look to the needs of the next generation and not the next election. So Secretary General, we applaud the work of the Secretariat and attest to your dynamic leadership as you buttress the regional integration movement. There are many issues that confront us at this period in our history. The full implementation of provisions of the CMSE, CSME readily comes to mind. Within the community, we empathize with our brothers and sisters in Dominica as they struggle with the devastation caused by Tropical Storm Erica, followed by the recent heavy rains which caused more destruction. I would say a double whammy indeed. As a region prone to natural disasters, we have a sacred contract with our citizens to bombard the international community in appreciating the debilitating effects that natural disasters occasion in many instances, as well as the effects climate change has on small, vulnerable island states such as ours. We must continue to insist on a coordinated and meaningful response from the global community. Ambassador the Rock, the Caribbean community, which we have the privilege to serve, has the immense task of ensuring that the region achieves its development goals through regional integration. We in St. Kitts and Nevis see this as an opportunity to build a region that not only promotes the rule of law, but ensures that all people in this region enjoy an improved quality of life and each one receives their fair share. I want to thank you and your staff for so graciously receiving us this morning. I say working together, I look forward to the unswerving service that we will render to the people of these fair Caribbean lands. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Excellency, Ambassador Lionel Sidney Osborne, plenipotentiary representative of St. Kitts and Nevis, or should I say St. Christopher and Nevis, in Walker, doesn't make, doesn't. to the Caribbean community, Ms. Sonia Body, Foreign Service Officer of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and former CARICOM Youth Ambassador, Ambassador Grandison and, and other colleagues from the Secretariat. Ambassador, it is a great pleasure that I welcome you, and it is a special pleasure, uh, seeing that we go back such a long way, that I welcome you as the new plenipotentiary representative of St. Kitts and Nevis to the Caribbean community. In welcoming you, I do so in the knowledge that your country has a proud history of being at the forefront of our integration efforts <coughs> at all levels. St. Kitts and Nevis has always accepted willingly its responsibilities in promoting and furthering the interests of the Caribbean community. May I also take this opportunity through you to once again congratulate St. Kitts and Nevis on the 32nd anniversary of its independence, which you celebrated last Saturday. I, with much regret, I, when I spoke to Prime Minister Timothy Harris, I said to him that I was not able to attend. I would have loved to have been there for the celebration and look forward to being there next year. Further. Ambassador, your accreditation comes at a time when change is in the air in our community. You will be joining our newest body, the, com the Committee of Ambassadors, which comprises all of your colleagues accredited to CARICOM from member states. You will therefore be one of, of the change drivers as we seek to reposition the community in keeping with the strategic plan for the period 2015 to 2019, as approved by our heads of government. It is therefore an exciting and dynamic time, as it presents an opportunity for you to be a part of the thrust to make our integration movement more effective and efficient and more relevant to the people of our community. Key roles have been identified for this committee by the heads of government, including the monitoring and evaluation of the implementation of the strategic plan, on which it will report to the community council on a regular basis. Its members will also be required to engage and interact with citizens of the community to highlight and promote the objectives, work, and the benefits to them of the integration movement. And Ambassador, part of the committee's remit will be to provide me with support and advice with respect to the restructuring of the CARICOM Secretariat and with the reforms to be undertaken within the rider CARICOM architecture. We are undertaking these reforms even as the global community is preparing to formalize 
its commitment to a common development agenda, and I refer to the post-2015 development agenda. In the context of the region's efforts to implement its 2015 to 2019 strategic plan, that international agenda takes on added global added significance, creating a platform for cooperation with global partners in achieving our objective of increased resilience, economic, environmental, social, and technological. It also, you also join us at the time, as you rightly pointed, uh, to the fact that the climate change, uh, uh, the COP will take place in, in, in Paris in December. And we have uh, been recently reminded, as you rightly said, uh, we've just said in, in, in Dominica, and prior to that in, in St. Lucia and St. Vincent, that climate change is upon us. It's not something to be debated that it's coming, it is here. And we need to respond to it globally as, a, as an international community and to build a resilience in our own community. I note that included in your wide and varied background is the field of education. Expertise in that area should certainly be useful in assisting your Prime Minister, the Honorable Timothy Harris, in the execution of his portfolio responsibility in the quasi-cabinet of the community, which consists of human resource development as well as health, including HIV and AIDS. As you may be aware, the Community's Commission on Human Resource Development has begun its work to align our skills to meet the necessary requirements for the 21st century competencies and competitiveness. I have no doubt that your experience in other areas such as trade, industry and community affairs would be an asset to advancing our regional integration as we seek to equip our citizens for a meaningful and productive role in our community. Within the portfolio also falls the Pan-Caribbean Partnership Against HIV and AIDS, PANCAP, which has built a global reputation as a leader in this field. There has also been the successful merger of the five regional health agencies into the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, which has proven its worth in its relatively short existence. And I was with the Prime Minister when he visited CAFA not too long ago um, to become familiar with his operations. Uh, CAFA has already proven its worth since it has come into existence. Ambassador, the road ahead holds much promise, although there will be challenges. I look forward to working with you to realize that promise for the good of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis and the wider community. It is with these few words, Excellency, that I extend to you my congratulations and best wishes on becoming the ambassador of your country to Caracol. I receive your credentials with great satisfaction. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Ambassador, a little token uh, of appreciation is a uh, Caracom pin, which has been forged here in Diana Museum. Thanks. Thank you very much. Ambassador, I present this as a token of appreciation from the government and people of St. Christian It's really something which was done locally by our local craft persons. So it's a pleasure to have so excellent. Thank you very much. So we can show the talents of your crafts, your master's crafts business. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to add this to.